Here we had a female that was half dead from the wild. She was called Viciosa, and she had had a fight and she came in half dead. We had her here for three weeks. She recovered in January. She was released in February. She returned to the wild. She gave birth and cubs have been born to that female. And that is an interesting example that demonstrates how this center not only tries to maintain the lynx, we also try to recover lynxes that could have died and return them to the wild so that they can continue procreating. Since the tragic death of Brethina, Nine litters have been born in the El Acebuche Breeding and Captivity Center, and each birth is a reason for celebration that brings us closer to 2010. By then, the other phase of the project will have been completed, and the experts from the regional government of Andalusia will have determined which of the four forest areas they are currently studying meets the conditions of environmental health and the presence of rabbits necessary to be the habitat of the first Iberian lynxes reintroduced into the wild. Meanwhile, the scientists at El Acebuche will continue to gather data to increase their knowledge of the physiology, etiology and reproduction of the most threatened felines on the planet. And they will continue to observe, fascinated, the development of these little creatures that are halfway between soft toys and fierce tigers, which it is impossible to stop watching. It looks as if the future will smile on the Iberian lynx. The admirable work of the breeding and captivity program, the restoration of optimum forest areas for the felines to live in the wild, and increasing public awareness will help make the dream a reality. Having reached this point, the hopes of the lynx lie with their ancestral enemies us, human beings. The majority of the optimal areas for the reintroduction of the Iberian lynx are in private hands and are used for hunting. It might seem strange to set predators loose in an area where rabbits are hunted, but time has demonstrated that the presence of the Iberian lynx in these environments is positive. On the one hand, it prevents the proliferation of other predators such as foxes, genets, or mongooses. And in addition, it improves the rabbit populations by eliminating the weakest and thus preventing diseases from being spread. But it will not be easy. It is calculated that there are now between 150 and 200 Iberian lynxes in the wild. And the most alarming thing is that less than 10% of them are females of breeding age. In addition, many of the factors that have led to the very serious situation in which we find ourselves remains present. The figures are worrying. Between the years 2000 and 2006, in the Doñana National Park alone, 16 lynxes died. Recently, two lynxes were run over on the roads in Doñana, which is very sad. And a lot is being done, a lot to try to improve this system of roads because many lynxes have died in recent years. But one positive thing about this worrying event was that in both cases, the driver that ran over the lynx immediately called Seprona. This is an important change of attitude because in the past they would have been afraid, but now they immediately call to tell us, I've run an animal over, I think it's an Iberian lynx, and Seprona immediately goes there.
Frequently, politics, the economy and nature have contradictory interests, but it is vital to find solutions that benefit everyone before it is too late. Seeing a lynx in the wild is no easy matter. They are wild felines and are therefore elusive and mistrustful. However, there are still places in Spain where with luck and patience you can have the privilege of observing the king of Iberian fauna. The El Acebuche Exitu Breeding Center the Department of the Environment of the Autonomous Community of Andalusia and the Ministry of the Environment are combining efforts to ensure the Iberian lynx does not disappear. CEPRONA, the international scientific community and numerous ecological groups are permanently monitoring the success of the project. The dream will come true in 2010 when the first cubs born in captivity are reintroduced into the wild. Before that moment arrives, it is necessary for many people to participate in this undertaking. We must involve everyone. If we don't fully realize the importance of the continued existence of the links, nothing will have been achieved. <laughs>